Hey there, it's Brie, and today I'm recommending some of my favorite obsessive possessive heroes. So as someone who prefers cinnamon roll heroes over alpha heroes, there aren't a ton of obsessive possessive heroes that I love, just because a lot of times obsessive and possessive goes hand in hand with alpha, and I tend to prefer cinnamon roll heroes. However, there are exceptions to every rule, especially when it comes to romance novels. There are plenty of tropes and things that I don't typically prefer, but there are always authors who do it really, really well. I will say though, I do love a pining hero, and a lot of times the obsessive possessiveness goes hand in hand with pining, and especially when they do go hand in hand together, when I do get a book that has both, I get obsessed with it. Like I said, I'm very picky about the ones that I like, so I thought that it would be fun to do a recommendation video of the ones that I do actually like because it is kind of rare that I like it. Sometimes I just get too skeeved out by it and I feel like it's a little bit over the top or it feels outdated to me, I guess, because I know that there was a time in romance where it was really, really popular that heroes were toxic and possessive and over the top obsessive. And a lot of times that can be a little bit unbelievable for me, but the books I'm gonna recommend here, I feel like it's done really, really well. So if you have similar tastes to me and you are a little bit wary of heroes like this, I think maybe you might like these books. So I know that there will definitely be more to this list than what I have here. I, like, In fact, I could have done a lot more, but I didn't want this video to be too long, so there will definitely be a part two to this video. Also, I feel like I have to apologize if you hear weird rustling around, my dog, my puppy is right here and I had to give her a chew toy to chew on while I film so that she doesn't run around and chew things that she's not supposed to or pee or whatever. For, okay, so this first book that I'm about to show you has so many things that on paper seems like I probably wouldn't like it. But for some reason when I read it, maybe it was the timing that I read it, maybe it's the writing, I'm not sure what it is, but I loved this book despite it being so toxic and have so many things that I don't normally like. And that is Deep by Sky Warren. So this one, not only it has the obsessive possessive super alpha hero, but also it's an age gap, which I don't normally love. They meet when she's like in her preteens, I think. Like she's really young when they first meet. It's also very, very dark, and it also is new adult, and I don't love those things typically, but again, there are a handful of books that are the exception, and this is definitely the exception to the rule. So the premise of this one, the hero ends up saving the heroine, not like in a heroic, like good guy way. It kind of is incidental that he saves her, but she's very young when he does that, when he does this. I forget the exact age. I really wanna say it's something like, it's like 13, 14, like it's, it's way too young for him, and he's way older than her. And they have a couple of, like nothing actually happens between them when she's that age and he's so much older because otherwise I don't look past that. But there is a very questionable incident that happens between the two of them That's um, that um, I was a little bit like, ooh, I don't know about that. But then some time passes, like she she goes back home or whatever after he rescues her, saves her, whatever. Um, also, trigger there's a ton of trigger warnings in this non-con dub con, sex trafficking, like there's a, there's a lot, this is a dark book. But anyway, some time passes after he saves her and she goes back home or whatever, and she is now in college, and then all of a sudden he shows up back in her life. It goes on from there, and this is, I think like book eight in a series, but it can definitely be read as standalone because I read it as a standalone. I guess all the books are very loosely connected, so I didn't feel lost at all. I actually don't even know how this book we would be connected to the others, but I probably will go back and read some of the other books in the series, but I will definitely be a little bit wary because of how much this one like kind of walked the line for me. But he is definitely obsessive and possessive with this heroine, super, super alpha. Don't normally like those things, but I liked it in this book. Okay, this next book is kind of the whole reason why I want to do this video because this embodies the perfection of an obsessive possessive hero for me. Like this, this and one other book on this list embodies everything that I love about an obsessive possessive hero that I don't normally love in other books. And this is a book that I discovered this year. It's a favorite of this year. I am so deeply obsessed with it and that is Mercy by Deborah Anastasia. This is actually the special edition that Deborah was selling on her website. A lot of people have been asking me where I got this edition. I don't know if she's still selling it. I think it may have been kind of a flash sale that she was doing. So she was taking pre-orders for this. And I just found out because I happened to go on one of her Instagram lives. I saw 
that she was live so I, I popped onto it and she was talking about these and then I placed my order and it got sent to me in like a whole box like I ordered a few books the the cover the original cover is really good too my niece actually has it let my niece borrow it because this book is a fantastic intro to dark romance because it is a light dark romance because Deborah Anastasia writes rom-com really well like she writes humor really well so it has like there's a lightness to this despite the subject matter being pretty dark because the hero in this is a stalker he is stalking the heroine and they don't really know each other they had an interaction when they were young he views it as her having saved him he has a very traumatic childhood. His father was abusive. His father killed his mother right in front of him. That is something that he's dealt with his entire life. He has a lot, a lot of trauma. He also is covered head to toe in skeleton tattoos. So like his face is the skull and then he has like a full skeleton tattooed throughout his whole body. And he does that because he feels that he looks like his dad and he's trying to hide it. But anyway, he feels the need to protect the heroine at all costs from his dad, but also from anything, and he becomes obsessed with her, and he watches her. So he, it definitely is a dark romance. He is so deeply obsessed with her. He has also been pining for her since the time he was a child, but he also feels that he cannot ever be with her. So that pining is it goes deep with him, but when he does actually get to interact with her, you can just feel how intensely he is feeling when he finally gets to interact with her. It is just so glorious how obsessed he is with her. And I feel like this book embodies this entire list, the entire vibe I'm going for, everything that I love about a pining hero, an obsessive hero, and it's just dark enough. Next on this list is another dark book. This one also happens to be, it's, it's definitely a romance, but it does have like psychological thriller vibes to it. And that is the Edge series by C.D. Reese. This is a series of, I think they're all pretty much novellas. They're all pretty short but you have got to read the prequel first. Otherwise, I, I feel like a prequel sets up the romance between the hero and the heroine and all the hell that they're going to go through in the rest of the books. This sets up their relationship to the point where you fall so deeply in love with them that you will put up with all the terrible things that are about to happen in the rest of the series. So this is also a military romance. The hero and the heroine are both in the military. She is a military psychiatrist and he is a surgeon and they are both deployed like at the same base, I think. And then something super traumatic happens the both of them while they are deployed and they kind of have this shared trauma that they're going through but things just devolve quickly when they come home and everything happens with their relationship the relationship is definitely tested there are a ton of trigger warnings in this for domestic violence and just neglect like all sort of grief all sorts of stuff in this book it is an intense wild wild ride he is so so super obsessive and possessive of her she also, I mean, they have this obsess, like both of them are mutually obsessed with each other. They're very obsessed and possessive of each other. It's a whole other level because of what happens in this. I don't want to really say because it's kind of like a twist in it and I think it's done really, really well, but oh my gosh, it is so good. Like, and it has you on the edge of your seat. Like calling this an edge series is perfect because this definitely had me on the edge of my seat. Next on this list is the Mist series by Regine Abel. Now Regine Abel might be a familiar name to you if you love monster romances because she is the one who wrote the Prime Mating Agency series that I married a lizard man, etc., etc. But I actually think that I like this series better than that series. And, and it's very close because I love that series too, but I love this series a little bit more because it's such a unique, interesting world. This is actually the second book in the series. I don't have the first book. To be honest, the cover of the first book is a little cringy, but I still want it because I really like it. The first book is called The Mist. This one's called The Nightmare. It takes place in the same world, obviously. You don't have to read them in order. Um, if you wanted to skip The Mist, I feel like you could, but it's still a really good book and just go straight to this. There is an audiobook for The Mist. I don't think there's an audiobook for this one quite yet. As soon as there is, please believe I will be grabbing it. Anyway, I love this series. Like I said, super unique world. In this world, there is this mist that takes over that like kind of fills the land or fills the world um, for a certain period of time. And it's predicted, like you know when it's coming. And if it gets into your house, it will let all these like creatures and beings in. So when the mist usually comes, the humans or whatever will like block up their houses. In both books, both of the heroes are, are obsessed with the heroines. It's a little different for each one because in the first book, a mist, 
the hero is the embodiment of all of the heroine's wishes and so he is like obsessed with her because he is was essentially created by her but in like a good way like he's definitely a good guy wants to take care of her you know cares about her wants what's best for her but then in this one he is the embodiment of her nightmares so there's a little bit of an enemies to lovers kind of thing there's that he's obsessed with her because she like basically created him so he has this obsessive possession of her but there's a darkness around him too because he also like kind of feeds on her fear and everything it is such an interesting interesting world I highly recommend it now for something a little bit different I mean that was kind of different too I'm trying to give like a broad range of types of books between like thrillers and dark romance and you know weird romance or different romances and now we're going to move into rom-coms because we do have an obsessive possessive hero in a rom-com by one of my favorite authors who I feel like I haven't talked about recently she hasn't come out with a new book recently so that's probably why but it is Captain by Lauren Rowe this is the very first book that I ever read by Lauren Rowe so it has a very very special place in my heart this is part of the Morgan Brothers series it is not technically book one in the Morgan Brothers series but is the first book that I read I think she wrote this book first I could be wrong. I don't remember, but I did read this first and I feel like it was a fun, I feel like because the Morgan Brothers series is a series of standalones, so you don't necessarily, they are connected and you do see how they are connected, but you don't have to read them in order. I like starting with this book. Hero is a little bit heavy to start with because it does have like a heavier topic. This one's very much lighter. It's very much a rom-com. This is an insta-love romance, which I feel like very few people can pull off insta love the way Lauren Rowe can. I am not an insta love person. I am a slow burn person. Give me slow burn over insta love any day. However, Lauren Rowe writes the most convincing insta love ever because her banter is so on point. The banter between the hero and heroine in this one is on point. In the beginning of this book, the hero and the heroine meet. He has just like, like just, just broken up with a girlfriend who it's just not working out with. And she is going out with a friend pretending that she's a flight attendant, like changing her name, you know, just going out, having fun, whatever. They happen to meet at the bar, they hit it off, they have this great banter, and it's going really well until his ex-girlfriend comes in claiming that they're still together. The heroine in this gets pissed. She's like, oh my gosh, you said that you're single, whatever, kind of storms off. But he has already become so obsessed with her that he goes through great great lengths to try and find her and figure out who she is. In fact, he even hires a friend of his, a hacker, to like hack into the airline that he thinks she works at to try and find out more about her. He is obsessed with her. And then of course she shows up again. She's a lot closer than he thinks. There is a wedding involved in this. It's a destination wedding that they're attending and they happen to both be there. It is just so freaking good, especially if you like an obsessive hero. It's great. It, it's great because it turns into like insta love, then then to enemies to lovers because you know she thinks that he was with somebody and hitting on her or whatever. It's so good. Another book that has actually a few possessive heroes, especially, and that is Credence by Penelope Douglas. This is a very popular book by Penelope Douglas. It's one of my two favorites by her. I think my favorite will always be Birthday Girl. The Credence definitely is up there. This is a super, super taboo, why choose stuck in the wilderness kind of romance. And it is taboo because there are relations that happen between the heroine, her uncle, who is not her uncle by blood, by marriage, <laughs> her uncle and her two cousins. There are things that happen between all of them. And all of all of them are very possessive over her, even though they, e they each have their own separate thing that happens with her at different points in it, but they are very possessive over her. However, one of the heroes in this is especially obsessed and possessive over her, particularly possessive. And I just, I love this book so much, especially if you like a wild hero, like an out of control, almost animalistic hero. The hero in this one is definitely that. And I feel like you don't just have the wild animalistic kind of hero. You also have like the kind of fun loving, fun hero. And then you have the like older age gappy kind of hero thing going on. There's there's something for everyone. Why choose? Why choose? <laughs> Next up, I have to be careful how I talk about this one because I don't want to give anything away in it, but I have to talk about it because the obsessive possessiveness in this book is just so on point, or in the series, I should say, is so on point, and that is the Filthy Rich American series by Nikki Sloan. Why I grabbed this version of the book, I don't know, because it's so heavy. This is the special edition bind-up version, so it has, the. this is the entire series. The, the first book, The Initiation, is pretty short. Like, they, all the books are pretty short, but this is the bind-up of all of them. 
You guys, this book is so freaking good. It's super, super taboo. It's about a very wealthy, privileged family. This book is pure candy to me. Like it's so addictive. It's one of the most addictive series I've ever read in my life. I do not marathon series very often, but this is one of the series that I marathoned because I could not stop reading this. And when you find out what the initiation actually is, I was like, is this really happening? Super, super taboo, super, super steamy. There are definitely things that, I, I, I understand why some people wouldn't like this series, like I get it, but I am not that person, I'm obsessed with it. And there's definitely a love interest in this series who is obsessed with the heroine and I cannot get over it. I like how this book ended, but I also know that it is that love interest, the obsessive love interest that really made this book what it is. <laughs> it is just so freaking good. If you haven't read this series yet, I highly recommend it. Check it out. Did you eat your toy? She's actually being good right now. This next book holds a very, very, very special place in my heart because it was the very first adult romance novel I ever read. I have reread this book over and over and over again, and I actually reread it recently, and it stands the test of time. Even though it is definitely a product of its time, it is still an all-time favorite. And that is Jacob by Jacqueline Frank. I accidentally grabbed the wrong book, and I'm too lazy to go get the actual book. I do own it, but I will just put the cover here. Anyway, this is a paranormal romance, and it takes takes place in the world in this Nightwalkers world. It's the Nightwalkers series. In this world, there are all sorts of paranormal creatures. The hero in this one is a demon. They use elemental magic and they're similar to vampires, but they're like, because they're like weaker in the sun and everything, but they're more like elemental beings. And the hero in Jacob, and Jacob, the hero, is an enforcer, so he is kind of like the outsider. A lot of people in his species are scared of him because he lays down the law, and one of the biggest laws that they have is that their kind cannot mate with humans because they can kill them in the process of mating with them because they are very animalistic, they give in to their instincts, and they are also very strong, humans are very weak, so it is, he is the enforcer, he, he punishes people, and he is what like the children of their species are warned about, like that's how the parents scare their kids, is by telling them, oh, the enforcer is going to get you, so this also means that he's very isolated. But then he ends up falling for a human woman, and it becomes animalistic and possessive and obsessed with her. But he also, what I love about this is that he also, because he's the enforcer, he also doesn't want to hurt her because, you know, his entire life he protects humans from his kind. So it goes against everything, everything that he is basically. And she is also a virgin, so that is just another layer on top of it. What I love about it is he, he also can't resist her, and so she keeps trying to seduce him, and she's like, all right, well, if you're not gonna do it for me, then I'm just gonna find someone else who will. And he just goes batshit crazy. It's just so delightful, and it is definitely a product of its time. It definitely takes a lot of tropes and things that were very popular back then, but I'm telling you, I feel like it stands the test of time and it is so well written. I love it so much. That entire series, by the way, the Nightwalker series is so good. So is the spinoff series of it, the Shadow Dweller series. Oh, so good. Next is, is another series that I feel like you can eat up like candy. It also has a sticker on it and I hate it and I'm scared to take it off, but it is the Ice Planet Barbarian series by Ruby Dixon. This is a great intro to Alien and Monster romance series to get into if you've never read them before. And also if you like possessive obsessive heroes, you're going to like this. This again has the obsessive possessive heroes that are this way mostly because of instinct, like an animalistic kind of thing. It also has like a faded mates situation in every single book. So that's part of the reason why you have the obsessive possessive heroes. There's also a language barrier, especially in the first book. And it's one of those like crash land on an alien planet. One of the great things about it is that the alien in this, the male aliens in it, there are not a lot of females. So when this plane, the ship crashes on their planet and it's full of females, they're all just like, let's go. They're very excited. Hi, Kiwi. They're very excited about it. A little overexcited, very obsessive, very possessive. I love it. And then last but not least, you know, I think this does have my absolute favorite obsessive possessive hero. It's one of my all time favorite books probably my favorite dark romance of all time, and that is With Visions of Red by Trisha Wolf. I talk about this book a lot because it's my all-time favorite. Super, 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 super dark though. It is not for the faint of heart whatsoever. The heroine in this one is a 
criminal profiler, I think is that, is that what it's called? Like she works for the FBI as a criminal profiler. And then the hero in this one works for, owns a BDSM type club, like an erotic BDSM type of club. And he also does Shibari. And Shibari plays a wonderfully erotic, huge part in this series. It is epic, epic, epic. This has a pining hero. He has seen her, like, so she goes to the club occasionally, but she's very, very standoffish. She does not like to be touched. She has, in the beginning of the book, you find out that she had been kidnapped by a serial killer, almost killed by him, and then he was killed right in front of her. So she definitely has, like, she has a lot of trauma associated with that. So she does not like to be touched whatsoever. And he knows this, like, he has been observing her from afar for a while, ever since she started going to this club, because it's his club. And so he knows this about her, but he just like watches her from afar. He's just so deeply obsessed with her. He calls her his goddess. And I am not a big one for pet names. And goddess, I feel like in any other context would be so over the top. But when he says it, it is so swoon worthy. Also, the audiobook is fantastic because the hero's voice is voiced by Christian Fox and he has this like low smooth voice. It's very similar to Jacob Morgan's voice by the way and Jason Clark like it's all in that kind of vibe like low and smooth. Yes this book is so good. So I think there's a bind up version of it now and I know the audiobook is all of them all in one but when they originally sold it was three it was like a series of three. Sorry good thing this is the last book because Keely is breaking. Anyway this book is so freaking good. I am so obsessed with this book and the hero is so beautifully obsessed with a heroine and I just love it. All right, guys, that's it. Those are my favorite obsessive possessive heroes. Check them out if you'd like. Let me know down below when you do or message me on Instagram. I'd love to talk about these books because I'm so deeply obsessed with them. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always, happy reading. Mwah!